minutes, okay? So I will say, <clears throat> we're gonna talk about partial fractions. We're gonna do this one the way that you would do it, um, not doing partial fractions, and then we're gonna use partial fractions and do it, and you'll see that it comes out to the same. Um, so <clears throat> when you see x squared minus five x plus six, it means absolutely nothing to you, right? Um, and so one of the things you can do is make this uh, perfect squared trinomial. And so if you recall how to do that, I'll do it over to the side. We have x squared minus 5x, and we kind of leave this 6 out here to himself. To make this a perfect square, remember you square root, you cut it in half and then square it. So you'd have 5 halves squared, which is 25 fourths. Um, but if I add 25 fourths, I have to subtract 25 fourths. And I haven't actually changed anything. I've just created this little perfect square. Um, the perfect square here is going to be um, x squared, my, or not x squared, x minus 5 halves squared. And this is going to end up being negative 1 fourth, or subtracting 1 fourth, rather. So um, we would say minus 1 fourth, which we can rewrite the 1 fourth as 1 half squared. And so we can then, let's erase some. Instead of 1 fourth, we would write this as 1 half squared. And so now you have a function squared minus a number squared. And you can use this right angle trigonometry. Now you'll notice that there are no denominators in theirs. They multiply everything by 2. So it's fine to do that with a triangle because your triangle, you just created a similar triangle. Think about similarity. You just multiplied all the sides by 2, right? So they multiplied this side by 2. They multiplied this side by 2. And they multiplied this side by 2. So they did that to kind of get rid of fractions. <clears throat> when you do that, um, if I were to do like secant, which is what they used here. So the secant is going to be um, 2x minus 5. So in order to get the what's inside here, um, we're going to say that x then would equal... Um, one half my secant, if you just solve back for x, right? Um, and then my dx, that's a, that's a two, not an x. My dx is gonna be one half secant tangent. Okay. Um, this guy right here is a square root, right? So if I did tangent, the tangent would be opposite over adjacent, right? Um, but we want to solve into that. So tangent squared then times one half is going to equal or uh, tangent. That whole thing is going to have to be one half. Um, one half tangent, if I square it, will give me that little x squared, what I'm looking for down there on the bottom. Okay. And so now we're going to replace the dx. We really don't need to replace this guy. We actually just need to replace the dx. We're going to replace the dx with the 1 half secant tangent. We're going to replace this right here with the 1 fourth tangent squared. Delta theta, all right. Uh, 1 half divided by 1 fourth obviously is 2, so we can pull a 2 out. And then we can get rid of one of our tangents. <clears throat> so we have secant over tangent, which is cosecant. It's one over cosine, um, then sine over cosine. Your cosines cancel, you get one over sine. So one over sine, so this reduces to cosecant of theta, delta theta, which has an antiderivative. If you'll recall, the antiderivative of cosecant um, is the natural log of the cosecant minus the cotangent. All right. If I were to do the cosecant of this guy right here, um, <clears throat> cosecant's one over your sine. So it's going to be um, hypotenuse 2x minus 5 over that. And then minus cotangent. So that's going to be 1 over my 2 
x squared minus 5x plus 6, right? We can combine those because they actually have the same denominator. Um, so 2x minus 5 minus the negative, or minus 1 is 2x minus 6, and they actually reduce the 2 out as well. So if you'll look in the book, what we did here, let me just move this up a little bit. This becomes 2x minus 6, right? And you can factor out a 2. So we have 2x minus 6 up here over 2 times the square root guy, right? That's a minus. A 2 can come out. So we end up with x minus 3 over um, x squared minus 5x plus 6 because we're subtracting yeah, to the 1 half, right? Um, you can actually do, <clears throat> they actually um, reduce this guy. So this reduces to 2 natural log of square root of x minus 3 over square root of x minus 2. Um, that's to the 1 half, so that can actually come out by expansion. So those 1 half and 2 will cancel out. So we have the natural log of x minus 3 over x minus 2 um, plus c. So this is going to be our answer to this. The natural log of x minus 3 over x minus 2. And they just use logarithm expansion, etc. to do that. All right? So that's what it looks like when you do it by your substitution with trig functions, all right? So let's look at decomposition, all right? So just reminding you of what decomposition looks like. If it's improper, divide it. You need to factor your denominator, split it up into a variable over each factor, and then come up with your um, numerators, pretty much, all right? So example one takes the exact same problem that we did. So when we do decomposition, we're gonna factor the denominator, then we are gonna put some number that we don't know over one piece of it, some number that we don't know over the other piece of it. So I basically have to multiply this guy by that base and this guy by that base, right? So a x minus two plus b x minus three should equal my numerator. And what's my numerator? It's this one though, right? It's one, right? So that should all equal one. And so now I'm gonna distribute and split it up. I have ax and bx, and I have negative two a and negative three b, right? Which means that my ax plus my bx should represent my coefficient in front of my x's. What is my coefficient in front of my x's? There isn't one, so it's gonna be what? It's gonna be zero, actually. I don't have a co I don't have an x, oh, right? If I had an x, I would put the coefficient, right? So ax plus bx is gonna equal zero x, which means that a, if I can erase that, not highlight it, that means a plus b is gonna equal the coefficient, which is zero, because there is no x. My numbers, my constants, negative two a, plus a negative 3b should equal my constant, which is one. And now I'm gonna solve by what method? Matrices. You like matrices, really? Yeah, I so would I just the way you wrote it, like multiply by like two. The, seeing the A just looks like the matrices. Yeah. Like thing. I would just multiply everything yeah. by two and add down. So my A's will cancel. 2b and negative 3b will give me a negative one b. Zero and one will give me a one, so b is gonna be negative one. Yes, systems of equations, they love it, yep. And then if I know that b is negative one, I can plug it into the first one, a plus negative one equals zero, obviously a is going to be positive one, right? And so I can decompose this guy by um, that method. And so now I can rewrite him to be positive one, that's what my a was, over x minus three, plus negative one over x minus two. And now if I wanted to do the integration of this, which is what I did in the first example, I can do this. 
and I can simply do natural log, right? So x minus three, the derivative of that is just one. So what is my antiderivative then of this piece of it? Well, it's gonna be the natural log of x minus three, right? Um, this is gonna be the natural log of x minus two, but I'm gonna have a negative in front of it because of that one. So minus the natural log of x minus two, and then of course I have this plus c. When I subtract natural logs, how do I simplify this? If I'm subtracting natural logs with the same base, how do I combine them? By what method? Condensing it. How do I condense a subtraction? It condenses to what? Yeah, so I have the natural log of x minus 3 over x minus 2 plus c. And if I look back, while partial decomposition is not necessarily the easiest thing to do that you do in pre-cal, I find it much easier method to do integration with this guy because I feel like the um, sine cosine requires a lot more than the decomposition of this one. All right, so I'm gonna have you try one. Um, this one, the reason I use, I'm using this one is because you have, um, common factors. And so I wanted to remind you of what happens when you have repeated factors. This guy right here factors to X and X plus one squared, right? X plus one, X plus one. And so you have to actually do, um, the A over the X plus a b over an x plus one, plus a c over an x plus one squared. So your common denominator here is this guy. So like I'm gonna multiply the a by the x plus one squared. I'm gonna multiply the b by an x and an x plus one. And I'm going to multiply the C by just an X. And that numerator should equal 5X squared plus 20X plus 6. All right. Um, foil this out, right? You're going to get X squared plus 2X plus 1. So you're going to have AX squared plus 2AX plus A uh, plus BX squared plus BX plus CX. And then what's nice about this is you basically already know what your A is and then you can back into it. So for my X squareds, the coefficients in front of my X squareds, A plus B, should equal the coefficient in front of my X squared, which is five. The coefficients in front of my X, which is two A plus B plus C, Right, 2a plus b plus c should equal my 20. And my constant, this is what gives it to you, is going to equal my constant. Well, 
now that I have that, that's much easier, right? So um, if A is six, then I'm just gonna break this down to B, um, six over X. Um, my B here, if I plug it in here, is gonna be negative one. So minus one over X plus one. And then my C, I can just plug it in here. And my C is gonna equal nine. So I have 12 plus a negative, what is it? I don't know, hang on. 12 plus a negative one um, and subtracted from 20. So we're gonna get nine for C. All right, now, um, this is gonna be a natural log, this is gonna be a natural log, and this is going to just be a regular antiderivative, right? So natural log, so this is gonna be six natural log of x minus the natural log of x plus of one, uh, plus we just um, add one, is x to the negative two, and then divide, so we get um, negative nine, over x plus one to the positive one. We can condense, so you do wanna condense these. Don't forget how you condense, right? How do I condense the six? Where does that go? Uh, right, so I'm gonna bring it down here. So this is natural log of x to the sixth, and because it's subtraction, we're dividing by x plus one, and then minus the nine over x plus one plus c. And that would be our decomposition.